when I went to Sunset School of Preaching, uh, my wife made a sacrifice to sacrifice her education to put me through school. And uh, being that, you know, I came from the ghetto, came from the worst neighborhood, I didn't know that, uh, that there was gifts inside of me that they were ready, you know, to be utilized because I had been hibernating for all those years and the gift had been covered through violence and all the drugs and all. And so I remember one guy uh, by the name of Bill Bonoski, I did a funeral for that guy that became my life coach, got hit by a truck and got killed instantly. And I did his funeral. And so uh, this, uh, this guy said, uh, I want to talk to you after the funeral. I want you to come over to my house. He said, I want to give you a full, a full scholarship to go to Pepperdine. And so I went over to his house and, uh, and we sat there and he said, uh, now, have you ever had any kind of education? I said, well, I went to Sunset School of Preaching. Oh, he said, man, that's all you need. He said, man, you need to go right to work. No, you need to go and start freedom. Well, he didn't say freedom, but he said, go start a homeless church. And then I want to be your elder. The education and the knowledge I got at Sunset uh, uh, and the scripture and the, you know, the biblical studies uh, were able uh, to allow me to personify what I'm doing right now, which is I am the gospel. But that was the best education I ever got because it's just a result of a person absorbing everything that he got from sunset and then allowing it to be personified as you become the incarnated Christ in the community. And um, it's, uh, I, I can't tell you how valuable that is to me because uh, the Word of God has been engrafted in my mind. And uh, whatever situation comes up, uh, I have those in the archives of my mind. And whatever situation comes up, uh, I can just take one of those scriptures out and apply it to that situation. And, uh, but it goes beyond that. It goes beyond you know, the sovereignty of God. The God is in control. I used to think that, you know, my uncle was a big time drug dealer, godfather in the Mexican mafia, that he was so powerful and I used to idolize him. When I found out how powerful God was through going through sunset and studying, you know, the, the attributes of God, the character of God, I said, man, God, my uncle has nothing on God. I said, man, I'm going to switch sides. I'm going to go with God because, man, I want to be like him, you know. And so... You know, you, you, you switch these, you make these paradigm shifts and um, boy, it's the most valuable thing. Uh, I, I mean, the most valuable thing that I could have ever done with my life is go to that school uh, because it allows you to be your own man and it allows you to see God, you know, from a different standpoint. That he is the father of the fatherless. You know, someone asked me the other day, uh, this, describe yourself in one sentence. Oh, I said, that's easy. I'm the father of the fatherless. And because uh, that's what my father's like. I shouldn't even be here today because of the, uh, you know, the story of my mother being shot when I was six months pregnant, and, and why the bullet didn't hit me is beyond me. But I look back in retrospect, and I think, you know, I am divinely doing what I'm supposed to be doing because that bullet should have hit me. You know, it should have hit me, but for some reason, you know, I can understand that scripture, you know, for. Uh, the longest incarcerated people in the whole world, you know, the Israelites were incarcerated for 70 years, but he told them this promise. He said, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to make you prosper, not to harm you. Plans to give you a future and hope. Then you will come and listen and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. And I really believe that uh, that bullet was spared because God knew you know, I'm not even smart enough, you know. I'm just a nobody going around telling somebody about somebody that can change anybody. And if you want your heart changed, Jesus can change your heart. 
I just assumed that's who I am, just a nobody, going around telling somebody. So, you know, I feel that everything that I've done, uh, God raised me up for such a time as this to be doing what I'm doing. And it's just amazing, you know, because there's, you can, you can go back and backtrack your steps and you can see the footprints of Jesus all over your life, you know, even through the danger, you know, even through moments when I was mistaken for a false identity where I was taken into the cornfields to be, you know, killed. Uh, and, and, and how this arm right here saved my life because of a tattoo I didn't have on this arm. And, uh, you know, being knocked out up there in Bernie, Texas, 40 miles outside of San Antonio, you know, and, and all I remember looking up into the sky and seeing the full moon and why I didn't get killed. It's beyond me, but I know, I know that God wants me to do what I, what I know how to do best, and that's just to talk and have conversations with people and tell them about the beauty of Jesus, the beautiful life of Jesus Christ. And it's just amazing. It just comes natural. I only have to strain myself or, you know, just, just, this is who I am. <laughs> it's just been an amazing journey so far. I just love it.